Gig Gab, the Working Musicians Podcast, episode 213 for Thursday, May 30th, 2019. folks and welcome to gig gab the podcast by for and about working musicians sponsors for this episode include band zoogle where at bandzoogle.com you can use promo code gig gab to get 15 percent off your first year we'll tell you some more details about that in a moment for now here in durham new hampshire i'm dave hamilton here in las gattis california it's paul kent how you doing today mr kent Uh, Not too bad today. California is starting to look like California again. We actually saw a blue sky and no rain and uh, the weather's getting up there to high 70s and our outdoor season is going to be starting pretty soon. Nice. Well, I am. uh, I'm flying out there for for work stuff, but it turns out you uh, on Sunday. So we'll uh, I I will be able to enjoy California as California. But uh, it also sounds like you and I might get a chance to play a little bit next week. Oh, no, no, not might. This is going to happen, brother. It's happening. All right. Sounds yeah. Good. Back together again. Yeah. 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 So Monday night, a big party, big industry party. And you're going to sit in on three songs for drums. You, you're you going to do uh, Taking Care of Business. Okay. You've done that one before. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet Home Alabama. Done that one before. Yeah. And Highway to Hell. Have you done that one before? I have. We've done that one together before. We uh, we did that in the All Star Band. It was a disaster because uh, Bob Levitis was going to sing couldn't it. sing that high. Yeah, no, no, he couldn't sing it at all because he wasn't on stage. He was oh, like in the back right. of the club. So we had to sort of like none of us could sing that high. But Bob was going to be able to deliver it, and and uh, the rest of us failed at that job. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So meat and potatoes stuff is is yeah. what I'm saying GB yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cool. It'll be fun. Speaking of GB, I, I understand my boy Simon from the House Rockers was in your neck of the woods and there was a collision of my worlds going together. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's right. Yeah. You're uh, you're two boys with New England roots wound up playing a gig on uh, on Saturday. Simon emailed me or texted me whatever six months ago or something uh, as plans for this were coming together. A, a, a good friend of his. <laughs> Her two kids were graduating, one from college, one from high school, and she wanted Simon to play acoustic. And I guess they there was another friend of theirs that they I think they all went to college together. I didn't quite get the full story, but um, yeah. yeah. And uh, and so this woman, Amy, was also doing this gig uh, with us. So it, it turned out to be a three piece. She and really can sing. She can really sing. Yeah, she's fantastic. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't know. Right. Because we're like, you know, we we set up and that was that was kind of the, the thing about that gig is we all came into it with such big ears. And as it turns out, every one of us is used to being playing the role of like, you know, sideman. Right. So everybody goes in with big, big ears because we know we haven't played together before. At least the two of them haven't played together in 10 years. They didn't rehearse or anything, you know? So this was all very, very new. And man, we hit like the, we locked in on, you know, on whatever the groove was for the first song, the chorus comes, Simon was singing lead on this tune. The chorus comes and instantly the three part harmonies are just exactly where they need to be. And that was, that was serendipitous at, at, at some level in that, each of our natural ranges just sort of fit together, you know, so there wasn't even a moment of stepping on each other. There were more moments later where we stepped on each other and then moved out of the way. But but that was it, you know, is is even Simon, because he knows how to blend harmonies. As soon as we came in, he stopped being the lead singer for, you know, that phrase. And we just blended. And it, it was that way for the entire three hour set. Uh, That's cool. How was, far from. How weird was it for you to get to this gig? Oh, it's about an hour away. So, okay. not, yeah, not a big deal. Easy, easy Got drive to across yeah, yeah. just across the state. Yeah, yeah. Super easy. But um, but yeah. Isn't Simon awesome, though? Simon's great. Yeah. He, you know, it was funny because he he's only been doing this acoustic thing, I guess, you know, the solo acoustic thing for a couple of years. Right. And and I had to keep reminding myself of that because he's he's great at it. it he's fine. But 
he, he, like he doesn't have the confidence of a 10 year career of, oh, yeah, just play whatever. It's like, oh, no, if we must like basically stick to the set list and we don't want to detour too far. It's like we could detour anywhere <laughs> we locked in, man. We This is yeah. good to go. Don't worry about it. Like he asked me at one point uh, we did. Um, so it was funny because Amy, the, the woman that that uh, sang with us. She was only there for about half the gig. She actually had another gig she had to go do. So it was the plan was it was just going to be Simon and me for the, you know, for the second half, which was which yeah. was going to be totally fine. And it was for whatever, four or five songs. And then the host of the party, we could tell. I don't know if we invited her on stage or if she just came oh. on stage. No, no, yeah. no. But she she like she was welcome to come on stage. It was her party. It was very laid back. But she could sing, too. Like, oh, cool. She started singing with us and was like, usually that story goes the other way, right? Totally goes the other way. Right. <laughs> and uh, we're like, holy crap. Like she can sing. And uh, and but, you know, Simon at, at one point, he's like, oh, let's think of songs that she can like sing harmonies on. She didn't want to sing a lead. She's like, I'm not that confident. I have stage fright. And it's like, no, you don't. And she's like, well, I've had, I've had four drinks. And it's like, OK, well, then you're at the perfect. Whatever it takes. Yeah. yeah you're, 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 you're not stumbling and you're not not afraid. So stay there. Yep. And uh, Simon's like, oh, we could do take it easy. He's like, but do you he turned to me? He's like, do you usually sing the harmony or the lead? I said, well, I usually sing the, the harmony, but I mean, it's take it easy. Like, I, I know all, all five parts. So just tell yeah. me which one you want. And and but that was that was like the thing like his. He's like, well, I usually only ever, you know, sing the harmony. It's like. Oh, right. New to the acoustic thing. Got it. You know, because he could easily have sung the lead. He would have been. It was weird for him to like, given how great he was on everything else. It was weird for him to say, hey, do you mind singing the lead on this? Well, But not only that, he's also very much a a, a giving guy. Right. Yeah. He's a he's a band guy. So some of that is not not confident. Some of it is right. him having over amount of deference to the people around him, which is totally Simon. I don't know if you know this, but Simon ended our streak of of spinal tap guitar players, right? I know. I we know. had we we've had seven guitar players. It's the most of any chair in, in the in the band. The first guy, it was his first band and you know he couldn't quite keep up. Second guy was a decent player, had terrible equipment. And the first two guys had not been in bands before. So, you know, I'm trying to put something together. I can't I don't know anybody, you know, in the scene to ask if they want to fight. So you find guys who can play anything and you say hey want to make a band and and you know you, you learn quickly you know that there's a there's a difference it's hard to it's hard to bring people who've never been in a band along like kind of what we had in macro all stars it's yeah. it's a it's a different thing so the first two guys you know didn't work out for experience reasons the third guy didn't work out for style reasons so he was a friend of a guy who was already in the band we wanted to keep going we brought him in he played the rock stuff the you know the, the distorted stuff great but you know the stuff like like Soul Man to play, you know, oh, that opening lick distorted yeah. is just not going to happen, right? No, no, so, that's, that's a clean thing. I mean, you got to be street, Steve Cropper all night long that way. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So he didn't work out. Next guy was a really good player and the first kind of like well-known local player who joined the band, but he didn't want to rehearse. He didn't want to put in the time. So that that ended. Yeah. Then the fourth guy was a fine player, but an absolute jerk. I mean, it was he was in the band for nine months. It was the longest nine months of my life. We fought constantly, right? It was just, it's possible. it was miserable. I don't, I don't want to point any fingers here, but it's possible that that might have been the reason that Gig Gab started because <laughs> it was those tight. Well, because, y you know, you, you said it was the most miserable nine months of your life. And we would talk a lot during that period, just, you know, like the yes. venting that would happen. And it, and that was that paved the way for Gig Gab. It wasn't the, the catalyst to it, but it certainly taught us that well there's a thing happening we can you know and when you had the idea for the podcast it was like well yeah like we already know how to do this together exactly <laughs> we just need to, well you know, you're, you're probably right is it to 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 protect the innocent or the guilty but there you go yeah yeah but again he was a good player but it just wasn't worth it it just right. literally was no fun to play you know with the guy so that was a pleasure to fire that guy the other guys were nice guys and it was actually hard and then we had um one of the really great local players joined the band for a, a while. And, and the funny thing was I sat down with this guy and I was like, you understand this is a sideman gig. You'll get three or four lead songs to sing. He, no, no, I just want to be in a band. I just want to be in a band. And sure enough, within about two months, you know, Hey, can I get some more songs? And, and the guy fortunately was enough of a pro and a true pro where he said, I'll stay as long as you need me to, but you know, you need to find someone who's happy right. just being a guitarist. So that was, that was the sixth. And then Simon was total serendipity. It was literally an ad 
on Craigslist. Uh, said he played in a wedding band in here in the Northeast. Yeah, yep. that's right. And, and yeah. listed some of the songs it was, and it overlapped with our list a little bit. You know, it just seemed like he had the structure and the and the vibe. He, and he, he came out. He understood the drill. Yeah, exactly. He did. He did. He came out. We played. Then his move got delayed for a couple months. And then uh, I, I must have been using subs in that time. And then when he finally you know, moved permanently, his whole family moved out from New Hampshire to here. Um, he came, played. And, you know, I, I, I could tell right away his vibe his gentle nature. He he had a great sense of humor. Um, He would be a good guy. And so now, you know, he's certainly the longest tenure and he's not going anywhere over my dead body. Will this guy ever leave this band? Because he's a great band guy. My guess is he is, um, if, if I overgeneralize, you know, in your band, you have the loud mouths and then you have the, the quiet people. And my guess is that in, in the context of your band, Simon is one of the quiet people. Like he, S- sort of. Yes. Yeah. But he has enough experience and he has enough, not he has enough band experience. You know, he's, he's a, he's a lifetime musician. Sure. He also, he does have an opinion. He asserts it in a, in a respectful way okay. at a respectful time. So while he doesn't, when the loud mouse are going at it with each other, he will defer, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't have an opinion and, or feel strongly about stuff. And he just finds the right way. And again, in a yeah, band of good. five, the mesh of personalities is one thing, take it out to the band of 10. And like we've said often, you know, the guy who doesn't speak, he does often have an opinion. And then if things end up going, not the way, even though he didn't speak up, if things go away that that aren't cool for him, that guy becomes disaffected. And then there's kind of a little bit of a cancer, a little bit of a problem in your band. You got to circle back around and kind of get the guys who are falling off the train. So, yeah. so, well, so it uh, sounds like Simon is, is, is the quiet guy, except not too quiet such that he falls off the train. He, he makes sure that he's, he's protected. That that's, that's awesome. That's, he is awesome. He's also, want. that's who you want. He's also <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. If you're a side man, that is about as good a quality as you can have in addition to your chops. And that's the thing is he is a fantastic player, all styles, tasty, you know, soloist, um, a really uh, solid singer. His leads are solid and he's a confident background singer and um, he knows he's a good musician. And so when it's a musical thing, definitely he'll wade into the musical opinions in a, in a more direct way. If it's a social thing, you know, I think he's a little bit like, you know, you guys figured out and, you know, yeah, and, but, know. He does have, and, but like I said, you know, of the personalities to have, he is one of the funniest guys I know in my life. He cracks me up when we do, we do duo gigs together. They are so fun. I mean, he just has me in stitches the whole time. And in the band, you know, he he's a he's a band guy. He loves being in a band. He loves being a musician. He loves and appreciates that people come out to see us. He just kind of radiates all the good, you know, and you need that guy who's kind of like the pure, the purest. Right. And I I would say that's what he is in the band. It's good. So I actually have something to talk to you about with regard to your solo gigs or your duo gigs with uh, Mm -hmm. with Simon. But but I'm going to I'm going to defer that because what I first want to do. Because uh, I have a bone to pick with you here. You you almost caused me a big problem on Saturday. So me. Uh, yes, you. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna hash this out right here, uh, but <laughs> not quite right now because I want to take a minute and talk about our sponsor, which is Banzoogle. So Banzoogle built my built by musicians for musicians. This is the place that you want to host your band's website because they know what you need. They know that you don't want to have to know how to code HTML and like consider that and think about setting up your own server and like all of that headache because you already have a lot of headache going on. They take this headache away from you, right? An all-in-one platform is what Banzoogle has created and offers and totally makes it easy to build a beautiful website for your music. And You won't be alone, right? Banzoogle powers the websites for tens of thousands of musicians around the world, from weekend warriors to Grammy winners to the house rockers even. So, yeah, you can host your own custom domain name if you want. They have dozens of these fully customizable templates, so you're not starting from scratch. They've even got tools to sell your music and your merch all commission free. They've got mailing list tools, right? All the things that we talk about on the show here that you need to be doing for your band. They check all these boxes so you can just go to Banzoogle and do it. And live support from their musician friendly team seven days a week. Live support. Here's a cool thing. 
Gig Gab podcast listeners, you go to bandzoogle.com, you try it free, 30 days. Then when you're going to buy, because you're going to wind up buying, like it, you're going to sign up. It's how it's going to be. You're going to use the promo code GIGGAB, G-I-G-G-A-B, all one word, 15% off your first year of any subscription. So that's quite a big savings right there. G-I-G-G-A-B is your coupon code. You got something to say about this, don't you, man? House Rocker recommended it. When you say built by musicians for musicians, it really is that kind of product where someone really gets it. You know, the, the, all of the beautiful templates that they have, you don't want to know, it, you know, this is not... 1993. You know, it's not like you're going to starting out with HTML and build something from scratch. You don't want to go to the cost of hiring a WordPress guy. This is so simple. And, and more importantly, the result is so beautiful. The sites are gorgeous. The themes are amazing. You have so much control over them. And, you know, all the little things, like Dave said, selling tickets, selling merch without commissions, paying to anybody, you know, setting up a store. They really have thought through everything. It's a great service. House Rocker is totally happy with it. I'm totally happy with it. The fee is totally reason well go check it out you'll love it bandzoogle.com gig gab is your promo code for 15 percent off and of course our thanks to bandzoogle for sponsoring this episode all right man so i get to this gig right and uh you know i, I brought the pa or whatever simon was already there he's showing me where we're gonna set up we're pulling the stuff out of my car and bringing it to the thing all's going well he's like hey did you bring a stool I'm like no He's like, oh, he's like, well, I, you, you, I guess you'd use a chair or something. I'm like, what do I need a chair for, Simon? He's like, well, I always sit for acoustic gigs. I'm like, why do you sit for acoustic gigs? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> Paul got me in the habit. He's like, I no, mean, no, I mean, no. I'm going to tell you what he said. He says, Paul says, no, with the house rockers, we got to stand with the acoustic gig. It's all chill. We just sit. Now. <sighs> All right. So everything nice I said about Simon is right in the window right now. <laughs> <laughs> so evidently he picked up this habit from you. At least that's his story. Now, I don't sit for acoustic gigs. I, I wear my cajon. It's a pain in the neck to play it while sitting. I also had on Saturday. I'll talk about why I no longer have it, uh, this issue with my leg. I, I have these um, the these these lipomas. They're little fatty things that just live like inside the skin or whatever. I get them all. If you've seen me and you looked at like my arms, you you probably noticed these little bumps or whatever. They're totally benign. They're fine. I mostly leave them in because I don't want to be Swiss cheese and get sliced open all the time to have them taken out. But I had one for like three weeks underneath, like right under my butt that made sitting in any capacity Awful. Agony. <laughs> yeah. So it, like I had just sat in the car for an hour to get there. It was like, there's no freaking way I'm sitting while we're playing. So I told him, I'm like, I, well, you know, I'm going to stand. He's like, that's cool. I'll sit. You do you. I'll do me. It's fine. And then Amy got there and she's like, yeah, I don't I, I stand when I sing. Like, that's how this is going to work. And time is like, OK, I guess I get outvoted. But by the end of the gig, he's like, dude, this is the right way to do it. I'm <laughs> singing so much better. The energy's up. He's like, this is the way to do acoustic gigs. So. I may have I may have caused you a problem too, but you no, know. not at all. <laughs> we we we've stood, I think the thing is our regular gig is uh, is Monday nights okay. at a, a kind of like a uh, it's kind of like a lounge. But you know, a lot of students are there. Nobody's really listening to us. You know, we we've been hired for this gig. We, you know, we have fun, but it's a Monday night, and you know, it's not a music venue on a Monday night. But sure. they wanted music, and it's an off night for us, and so we took it, and. You know, we are so background to this. I wouldn't call it performing. I would call it literally background music. And in that case, I don't mind sitting for an acoustic show. Yeah. When I do my own acoustic shows, sometimes I stand all night. Yeah. And, I, and sometimes I sit. Sometimes I sit on a stool, not not a low chair. And sometimes I usually what I do is is a little bit of both. Right. You know, there there are actually some guitar songs that. Um, <clears throat> that I need, I, I can't play standing up. The angle of sure. my hand is a little bit harder. So you know, some finger picking things, some that type of thing. So, <clears throat> um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to talk to Mr. Simon about the <laughs> wince that, uh, whether the first time that we did it and I was like, what probably happened, I was like, well, dude, cause I got the gig. So it was my gig. Sure. Yeah. Right, it was like, right, right. you know, dude, you know, we're entirely background. Let's just have some fun. Let's just sit down and, you know, people listen if they listen. And, uh, the probably one of the gigs or one of the first gigs we did at this place that was, we were so background that, uh, that, uh, I said, you know, it's fine to sit, but, um, you know, I'll have to talk to Mr. Simon about, uh, about, uh, whether <laughs> told, I'm responsible for all his decision-making. He totally threw you under the bus on that one. Totally. What oh, happened? Yeah. I said, Never mind. He sucks. He can't play. He's uh, <laughs> not a nice guy. <laughs> That's awesome. 
<laughs> so, um, you know, I had this is a busy week for me because I had the Simon thing. We're doing this Thursday. I had the Simon thing on uh, on Saturday. I had a Madhouse rehearsal on Tuesday night as as usual. And then Madhouse gig on Wednesday night. So it was this weekend that I figured out that my back problems that I've been leg like problems that I've been having for three weeks were related to one of these these little, you know, lipomas or whatever. Uh, it, it And this is how it always goes when I realize that one of these things is in like a bad spot. Like I'll, I won't quite realize it's that I was traveling some. I thought my back was just a little effed from, you know, planes and cars and like, you know, typical travel stuff. Yeah. And finally this weekend, I think it was like either to or from the gig with Simon. I'm like, wait a minute. I bet I have one of those things. And I just kind of reached around and felt and was like, yeah, there it is. And it was like this little, you know, marble sized thing. I was like, OK, so now it's like holiday weekend. So on Tuesday morning, I call my doctor. Now, I know I'm traveling next week and I know I'll probably murder the person in the seat next to me on the airplane if I have to sit for six hours with this particular problem. So it's like, all right, this is the worst week to have any kind of surgery, even though this is like 12 minutes of surgery. But I have to do this before I travel. So I talk to my doctor and the one day that I have off of gigs is today, Thursday. So I call the office and I'm like, does, you know, doctor have any time to do this they're like yeah of course we can do wednesday or friday i'm like right so how's thursday look and they're like yeah he's in you know the er all day like great so i had to make this decision do i do it friday when i have a gig friday night and then also a gig saturday with uh, the wedding band so fling friday uh where we're doing this like live band karaoke ish kind of thing for a private party and then a uh, wedding with uptown on on saturday so four gigs in a week with four different bands Four different set lists to learn, which has also been really kind of interesting. Like as soon as I was on the way home from the Simon gig, I'm putting in the Madhouse set list. As soon as I'm on the way home from Madhouse, I'm putting in the Uptown set list with the new songs that we have to know. You know, so anyway, so I was like, all right, I'll do it Wednesday. So we rehearse on Tuesday night with Madhouse and it was like totally miserable trying to sit in the drum stool. So I was like, all right. So Wednesday morning, I go into my doctor. He's a guitar player, too. Thank goodness. Or, you know, he's a musician, too. Thank goodness. And I tell him, I'm like, look, you know, here's the deal. I, I, I have a gig tonight, you know, and he's like, ooh, he's like, OK. And uh, he's like, so my gut tells me that we're not going to do this. He says, but I understand from you that we're going to do this. He's like, so that's OK. It's like, here's what you got to look out for or whatever. So he did it. And it was he actually had I had him take two of them out, one on the front of my leg and one on the back. And literally the, the, the you know, the surgery happened in his office. It was like 20 minutes soup to nuts, like walked in and out. No problem. And uh, you know what? It was totally like it instantly. I like I felt better. So it's like, OK, no. did, we did the right thing. And the one in my leg was way or on my butt was way bigger than I thought. It was like four marbles, not one. So like, oh, no wonder. Like I've been trying to sit on this thing and compensate for it. And when I sat down at the drums, it was like, OK, this is fine. Uh, no problem. Played the gig like my foot worked better, like all this stuff that had been like sort of creeping up in the last month. It just went away. It's like, oh, great. We get to the end of the gig and it's like, wow, you it's not really sore or anything like this is great. Of course, I woke up this morning and it's like I, I actually picked the right day to do it because today is the day that like it actually hurts. Because, you know, yesterday it, it needed it needed time to like bruise up and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's so I did time it right, even though it didn't seem like good timing. But uh, but yeah, the gig Madhouse. So Madhouse last night, I mean, it from from my like a physical standpoint, it was fine. It was um, we were too confident, but we knew it. It was one of these weird things like we got to like five, five thirty p.m. yesterday and we were finished running like all of the quote unquote trouble songs. And it's like, yeah, no, we're usually not finished with that till 10 till like seven 30 when they have to open the house. Like they're, they're begging us to stop so that they can let people take their seats. It's like, okay, this is not good. Like, I know there's things that, that, that are going to be a disaster. And there were a few songs that were in my opinion, utter train wrecks. Um, I'm told that even by people who also felt they were train wrecks in the moment, they watched some videos last night and they're like, you know, they weren't as bad as, as we thought. Like, that happens often, right? It does. Yeah. Yeah. There were also songs that were fantastic. And I, so I don't want to watch the videos yet just in case I'm wrong about those two, but um, you know, cause I, I kind of need the balance uh, in, at least for a day or two for my, my tender ego. 
But do you uh, listen to just to pause you for a yeah. second? Do you um, get home from a gig and and look for audio and video and you know see how you did, or do you need a day or two to kind of let the gig kind of sink in? Yeah, I've learned that um, that that I cannot. That's a bad idea for me to to. I, I need at least forty eight hours between like finishing and when I want to go listen back because I have my own opinions about it and and I I you know I sort of go through a mental process my own little debrief of the gig and I need to do that for myself before I go and have like the the okay here's here's this perception of it. Um, you know, from a, you know, from a camera or whatever, like, yeah, I, I've, I used to, I did it once where I, we had a great gig with uh groove syndicate like 10 years ago and I had recorded it and I listened, I chose, Oh, I'll listen to it on the way home. Like that gig was awesome. I'll pat <laughs> myself on the back for an hour and a half all the way home. No, no, it was terrible. Uh, I was like, Oh, all these mistakes. God, those harmonies aren't right. Like this is like, it's like, I need a pen and paper to like jot down all these notes. It was, it was terrible. So now I just, I give myself 48 hours. Yeah. There, there is something to be said though, about, um, the immediate feedback. It, I, I was part of a jam session in Connecticut. I think I've talked about this on the show before, maybe, uh, well, it was like 20 years ago and we got together once a week, every Tuesday, basically without fail and with no intention or expectation of ever gigging or doing anything other than getting together every Tuesday. And these were all people that were serious players. Most of the time we would play uh, like a riff. We would play different stuff, but, mm -hmm. but just to kind of give you an idea of the caliber one night, uh, the guitar player started playing the 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 intro to Rush's La Via Strangiato, which is a crazy original, uh, a crazy instrumental tune. It's also an original of theirs uh, from <laughs> yeah from uh, like Hemispheres, I think. And uh, I mean, it's a crazy song to play. And he started playing it, and I so I I picked up the drum groove. The bass player played it, and we played it all the way through. It wasn't perfect, but like the, the, this was the caliber of players that I was playing with. You know, I there's most most I don't know that I've ever played in a band that where that could happen again. But um, we would just play, and we would groove on things, and we'd jam a little bit, or maybe somebody had an idea that we would sort of flesh out. Occasionally, you know, like I mentioned, a cover would sort of emerge because it was it sort of happened. But by and large, it was just instrumental music with uh you know from from wherever it came from mm -hmm. and we recorded a hundred percent of it and then and we would play for like an hour and a half two hours then we would go sit on the couch and listen back immediately and it, this wasn't like an intentional like you know exercise it's just how it happened you know we would go sit on the couch and start hanging out and greg would rewind the tape and you know get the mix right and start playing it and we just leave it in the background and it was so educational to do that in like a safe environment. Like I, I, I know that I wasn't in front of people. It doesn't matter if what we played was good or bad. You could be really objective when, when you don't have to like convince yourself that you didn't just go put on a terrible show for someone. Right. And, uh, there would be moments where, you know, we'd be playing and be like, Oh, this is freaking awesome, man. I can't wait to hear this back. And then you hear it back. It's like, wow, we really overdid it there. Like that's pretty bad. Uh, and the reverse would happen. You'd be playing something. It's like, this is going nowhere. This is kind of boring. And then you hear it back. You're like, wait, wait, this is that part. I thought it was boring. This is, this is fantastic. And getting that instant feedback really taught me to be better about it in the moment too. Uh, I'm, it, it's impossible, at least for me to be perfect in the moment, but it, it, you know, it, it, I got way better at, at being able to kind of have that objective, you know, producer's ear, uh, in the moment while playing and and I and I think it served me uh, uh, you know amazingly well for the last 20 years so it there is a benefit to it but not for me not after a public gig so I, I kind of want to dive right in I'm usually up late especially if we play a big public sure. gig and I know people are taking videos I kind of want to dive in I don't you know I I listen to it from a leader's ear like are, is the band, you know, on the same page as much as we think we are. Yep. And, you know, the, the individual mistakes, I kind of, you know, assume everybody knows what they did. And, you know, so I don't bring the mistakes, you sure. know, to people's attention. But if two people have 
have interpreted something differently and, you know, we didn't catch it before. That would be something we, you know, we do. And, you know, we do a lot of stuff that's kind of spontaneous. And so, you know, you like we bridge a couple songs with like a little percussion breakdown. Right. Yeah. And uh, we kind of talk through it often, but, and, but we talk through it before a gig starts and we say, okay, here, when we get to this, this is going to happen. It's always interesting to me. I think we have a probably about 80% hit rate of catching something that's a verbal cue communicated, you know, minutes before you get on stage. We, we're pretty good at it. But, sure. Uh, but every once in a while you catch something like, oh, that would be cool if everybody caught it. Let's, let's, let's go through a rehearsal or do something like that. So, but uh, yeah, I like to consume the knowledge while the gig is fresh in my head. I, yeah, no, I, and, and I can totally see that. Um, I, I just don't enjoy it. Um, but, but like I said, you know, doing it with, with that, that Tuesday jam thing, uh, for so long, like th- there's a huge benefit to having what you thought happened. Now you get to mix that in and, and you get to learn, right? Like, Oh, what I thought happened wasn't that, but the next time, and you're in that moment, you're like, wait a minute, I know how to interpret this here better because I have, you know, experience with that objectivity. So yeah, yeah that, that's no, it's, it's totally worth it. I just, I play most of the gigs that I do, I play to enjoy them as well as, you know, better myself as a musician. And so sure. I so for that 48 hours is for me to either enjoy it or wallow if it was awful, if I felt like it was awful. And then, you know, I get the honesty, whatever, down the road. So this weekend, I'll probably, you know, f- suss out some of those Madhouse videos. One tune we played. It was a uh, I think I told you last time it, the theme was like Madhouse Goes West or something. So there were a lot of like country ish kind of things that happened. I got to play Rawhide for the first mm-hmm. time in my life. We played Rawhide. The best part was the rehearsal yesterday. The cast was getting we the band was singing the song. So they weren't singing it. They were doing some weird like choreo or something and they needed to get some timings right. So we wound up playing Rawhide five times in a row. It became like the Blues Brothers, you know, because it was just <laughs> over and over and over again. So obviously the jokes were, you know, abound. But um, but we played Man, I, F- I Feel Like a Woman and the rehearsal on it was fine. You know, it was no problem whatsoever. It was a disaster uh, in the moment. I think the guitar player, either the guitar player or a keyboard player, they were playing in two different keys, at least two different keys, um, perhaps more. Uh, and and singer was like, I don't know what was I don't know what happened. And and the beauty of Madhouse is we only ever play any of these songs once. So mm-hmm. as soon as it ended, it was like, OK, it's over. And I, <laughs> I started that process of what went wrong. And I was like, whoa, whoa, wait, I don't have to worry about it. This is Madhouse. What's next? It's gone. That's it. yeah. It's gone. What's next? Doesn't matter. Was it great? Doesn't matter. What's next? <laughs> you know. So, uh, but yeah, I do want to. I I do want to uh, dig into that because there are things you can learn. Like, okay, what you know? How did we? Well, how could we have communicated it better ahead of time so that we don't run into this scenario the next time? Because it's even though it's different songs, it's the same formula. You know, we have a lot of songs to learn. And if we can shortcut to to things that, you know, we know will be like helpful in the moment, that's that's a valuable thing to to dissect out. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, on Sunday night, I went and saw Sammy Hagar with his new band, uh, well, relatively new band uh, called The Circle. I guess they've had it for, together for five years or something. And uh, it's him and Michael Anthony. Uh, is playing bass and singing together. Those guys are fantastic. And Vic Johnson on guitar and, and um, Jason Bonham playing drums. So they're playing uh, some of their own tunes that they wrote for this new record they have. And then a bunch of Van Halen tunes and some Sammy tunes and some Zeppelin tunes. And it's great. You know, Sammy Hagar always delivers. I don't, have you ever seen Sammy live? I have, you know, he's a Bay area guy. So right. he's, uh, he's part of the legend around here. He, you know, he, when he sang with Montrose was kind of the beginning of his legend. Right. And uh, totally. you know, that's a that's a Bay Area, you know, legend. And um, then his Red Rocker phase, you know, through the years and he was around quite a bit played. We used to have I don't know if this is the first, but when I was in the 70s, mid 70s, when I was in high school, they Bill Graham started um, the first kind of stadium. I guess it'd be the first kind of festival. But they would be weekends of music uh, in um 
in a baseball stadium. So it would oh, be okay. 50, 60,000 people. They were called days on the green. And, uh, Sammy had a legendary one, you know, there, and they, you know, amazing, you know, everybody who was anybody came through those sure. and some really weird pairings, weirdest pairing of, of fan groups that I have ever heard of is the grateful dead and the who <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's, yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, Sammy, you know, he, he's played every size venue in the Bay area and he is definitely a legend. And, you know, when he went on to sing for Van Halen, I think everybody would say, Oh, that's really great. Cause you know, he, he is a great singer. He's, I mean, he is, he is he's rock a and roll singer. He's also perhaps the best front man in rock and roll. Well, I don't doubt that either. It, and, you know, go, go get his early solo stuff, go get his live, yeah. you, know, his, you know, and just, he is just constant energy and just real rock. I mean, he lives it. It's, it's all about him. There are great stories about him showing up on Bill Graham's uh, door, you know, knocking on the door to get auditions. And, and, you know, he is just that, that kid who was, nothing was going to stop him from being a rock star. And he had the talent to back it up. And he's still that way. Like he's, and he, he will, and he knows to kill yeah, yeah, yeah. He will convince Mescula now because that's the yes. thing he's selling, right? Yeah. Uh, and he did. He changed the worms. The worms. There, there you go. <laughs> yeah. The words. Too much Mescula. To uh, <laughs> Mas Tequila. It's now Mas Mescula. So, you know, he's always uh, a consummate marketer because rock and roll for him financially is a hobby, right? His big money comes from, well, tequila and rum and now Mescula, right? He sold the tequila company for, what, like a billion dollars or something crazy like that? Yeah. He got and then Cabo it. Wabo, yeah, you know, yeah, he's, clubs got, he's and, got his club. I think the club is a is also a hobby. I don't think he makes a ton of money from the club, but I think it breaks even. But well, he licensed them because I, I don't right. think he owns every one of them. But he started the one, and then I think he licensed them, and that's probably a good business for that, him. That, yeah, 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 yeah. That's I think that's right. Yeah, but um, it, yeah, he'll make you feel like this is the best audience he's ever played for. You know, this is the best gig the band's ever had. Even if you know that going in, he still he believes it in the moment and therefore he he makes it believable. But I don't know if you know this, but yeah, but past uh, past gig gab guest Robert Berry was his bass player for a while. Oh, I didn't know that. No kidding. Yeah. Ah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So the thing and I knew Sammy would uh, would deliver. And and th that whole band delivered. I mean, it you know, it's a bunch of serious players. What I did not expect was their opening act, another San Francisco band, Night Ranger. These guys, man, they only played like an eight song set or something. I, I my, we brought the kids and I told the kids afterwards, I'm like, you guys just got to see something I never thought you'd get to see, which is exactly what all of the concerts I went to in the eighties were like, right? Here's this band of people that can really play and they can still really play and can really sing. And they can still really sing playing yeah. these songs that are really catchy. Yeah. They might be a little bit cheesy and corny and whatever, but you know what? They're having a blast up there playing them. They look like they're having fun because they are having fun and they're playing the hell out of these tunes. And they were so fantastic. I mean, it was just like any concert you ever saw in the 80s, right? You know, yeah. hair metal kind of thing. Not hair metal, but, you know, that 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 80s, 80s, ballad, 80s. Yeah. 80s ballad rock, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And man, you know, and Jack Blades can I, they can all still sing really yep. well. And Jack Blades is sounds fantastic. And he's also he's a great front man. You almost forget he's wearing a bass with how much he like moves around and his antics and everything. But he, man, and, you know, of course, he was in Damn Yankees, and so they played high enough uh, in the set, too, and he sang that, and it was just like, oh, man. Like, and I did not expect any, I expected them to play, I forgot he was in Damn Yankees, I just wasn't thinking about it, you know, going into the, the gig, and uh, I figured, okay, well, we'll hear a couple of their minor hits, and then, it, you know, they'll end with Sister Christian or whatever, and whatever, that's fine, that's great, you know, good for them. And and they they did, but they also played this other stuff. But every song they played, whether you knew it or not, sounded great. And they were super happy to be who they are. They yeah, like, sure. you know, and there's a lesson in that. It was real. It, it was, was real. it was transparently real, it, which I think is. Yes. Is the key to, to great music. I think that's when it, you tear down all the stuff and it's just someone emoting something that they love to you. That's an infectious thing. Time tested, guaranteed.
Guaranteed. And that was it. They're like, you know, if you sat them down and you said, you, you guys know that you wrote and, and played some really, you know, like cheesy 80s songs, they'd probably say, yeah, it's freaking awesome. Love it. Yeah. Right? yeah. Go said, us. Go us. And that was exactly it. Like they were totally OK, not only OK with who they are, they love who they are. Or at least that's yep. what they communicated on stage. And I. I think it's genuine. Yeah. It all right. Really so is. for Sammy, I got to give, you know, we got to, cause I love lists and you do all the, the notes for the, for the every yeah. episode. So I got to give my top five Sammy songs. Ready? Okay. Yeah. S- Space station. Number five. Okay. <laughs> 1973 with Montrose red, of course, his signature signature song, the red yeah. rocker. Yeah. Um, uh, get on your bad motor scooter and ride. You ever hear that one? Uh huh. Yeah. Montrose. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've done everything played, for you. I think he played that when I saw him with, uh, what was the band he had before this chicken foot? Um, and you know, I didn't even think about it when, when, when we interviewed Kenny Aronoff, Kenny played drums on the chicken foot tour that I saw. Oh, that's that. right. Yeah. 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 So, sorry. Uh, you get space station number five, red, get on your bad motor scooter and ride. Yep. Yeah. I've done everything for you, which would still oh, yeah. be an awesome song today to play. Like that's that yeah. would be a fake book song, right? It's so, just so good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yep. And then let's see, last one, Young Girl Blues. Oh, okay. All right. Yep. 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 Oh, so, I like it. I like it. Love Sammy. But his live album is freaking great. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's who Sammy is, right? Is definitely. You know, yeah, man. Good stuff. I yeah, I love that dude. He's he's fantastic. <laughs> it, it he's it doesn't matter what band he plays with. He he makes it great. He makes it his. Yeah. I don't really know much of the history as to why he's not still Van Halen's guy. If Van Halen's going forward. Is it really that Van Halen? You you seem to follow Van Halen closer than I. Certainly, they just wanted their original lineup, except for their bass player, and and onward they go. Oh, no, well, no, it's more than that. No, it's it. So Sammy didn't realize he was fired the second time. I think neither time he knew. I think maybe the first time Eddie called him and told him he was fired, but it was unceremonious, as is the case with everyone except Gary Sharon that that has parted ways with the Van Halen brothers. Gary, uh, it, both sides of the camp. And Gary said this to me personally, too. It was a very amicable split. They realized it was not a good fit for the fans, even though they liked the musical collaboration. And so they mutually decided, yeah, we, you know, we, we need to, you know, we all we, we all need to move on. This is not this is not working. Right. But um, but with everybody else, with David Lee Roth and and with with Michael Anthony and with Sammy Hagar, they it was always unceremonious. And I'm pretty sure that the second time they fired Sammy uh, and Mike, they uh, both of those guys found out about it by reading it in Rolling Stone or something like that. Uh, they fired Mike because uh, because he was with Sammy. It was well, you know, you're mm. he's the enemy, so uh, you know you 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 have to pick, and you've already chosen. So there you go. Yep, you're you're out. Yeah, yeah, those guys aren't. Um, they're they're ruthless when it comes to personnel uh, in their band. So, uh, you know, seems I don't know, like they've had a successful career. So if, if they're if they can sleep at night, then all good. Yeah. Right. It's their business. Totally. Totally. Yeah. I had I had forgotten that I've done everything for you as a Sammy Hagar song. There, Great song. It, you know, it wasn't until I saw his new rock and roll road trip show with um, he did one with Rick Springfield. And he went to Rick's house and they talked about that tune. And Sammy, I guess, released it first uh, on that live record and it bombed. Right. Nobody liked it. And then and then Rick Springfield did it. And it was, I mean, top 10. Right. You know, I don't think it was yeah. quite number one, but top 10, certainly. And and then, you know, Sammy has played it. So the two of them played it acoustic together on uh, on the show. It's worth that show's pretty good. That rock and roll road trip. He does a good job with that. So. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Well, we got anything else to go through, my friend? I mean, I have all kinds of things. Like I said, I've got gigs coming up and crazy things happening, but uh, well, keep yeah. keep hold of them. And, uh, you know, we'll do this again. Man. We will. I know. We'll expect we should, you to face to face next time. We might be able to do a face to face next week if we can carve out the right time. That's right. Yeah. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. We will. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, I will mention this here on Wednesday afternoon at 
I'll put a link in the show notes. Uh, but Wednesday afternoon in in San Jose, I'm having a little meetup that was sort of organized by uh, with, with my involvement, but from uh, some Mac Geek Gab listeners, one of the other podcasts I do. If there are any Gig Gab listeners in the area that want to come to this thing, four o'clock on uh, on Wednesday. I don't know if Paul, you can make it, but uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, I'll put the link out there, and I'll certainly be there. I would love to meet you. So it's always where is it? Uh, well, one of my listeners picked it because it was a place that had parking nearby, the San Pedro Square Market. Uh, oh, that's that's where Simon and I play on our Monday nights. No kidding. That's really yeah, that's that's our Monday gigs. <laughs> so now you'll experience the glory of our background music. There you go. Yep. So yeah. Four o'clock on. Uh, no, it's a good place. It's a good place to hang out. It's, that's uh, what you said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think you'll have a lot of fun. Cool. I don't know. Do, are people like in line to, to kiss the ring or what is this like? Oh, no. It's, we just hang out. It's all fine. <laughs> it's, uh, there's no kiss in the ring go, that goes on here. No. No, 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 no. I, I feel bad. I got a, a, a text or an email or message or something somewhere from uh, from a Gig Gab listener who said he saw me at the Sammy Hagar concert and he wanted to say hi, but we were in line for the bathroom and he thought that that was a weird place to meet a stranger. That's it, an awesome it, story. I, Come on, man. I, I, that's the, and that's what I, you and I first, I think we first met in a bathroom. So we it were peeing been right next perfect. to each other. Right. We're peeing right next to each other. That's right. So, yeah, no, I I, I told him, I, I said, well, I, I appreciate you being, you know, respectful, but that I don't need that kind of respect. Like, come say hi. <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be great. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's what I got. You got anything else? All right. Good. All right. No, you travel safe. I'll see you face to face next week. Looking forward to playing with you, yeah, man. We'll jam a little bit. It'll be fun. Yep. Looking forward to it. Thanks to Banzoogle. Go check them out. B A N D. Check them out. G L E dot com. On Monday, Paul. Together. Yep. Yep. We will Together always, again. Always. Be performing. Be performing.